Good evening and welcome back to Point Blank here at KTN News. The Minister for Devolution is talking honestly to Kenyans about how he sees it. Uh, my brother, uh, Buona Cabinet Secretary, in terms of the region, in terms of where you see um, the Jubilee government, I don't know, in the last two terms, I know we talk a lot in Kenya about the four agendas, and I think the president and the cabinet are passionate about that. Mm -hmm. Where do we sit in East Africa? Where do we sit in the region? Where, where, where do we sit in the world map uh, in, from your bird's eye view? I think in Africa, there has been talk of uh, Africa rising. And uh, my submission is that if Africa is rising, then Kenya is the rising star of Africa. I've been to many forums internationally when people talk about Africa nowadays, they would ask about Kenya, would ask about South Africa, maybe a Cairo, maybe Nigeria. So Kenya is actually the rising star of Africa. When you look at the region, we remain the regional giants, the biggest economy in the East African region, and we are amongst the fastest growing economies in Africa. I think there are some of these things that we have been uh, we, have, we have not been celebrating as Kenyans. We tend to focus more on the negatives. Just the other day, we received global recognition in terms of uh, electricity connectivity as being uh, the top African nation. I mean, when you look at our peers, we are head and shoulders above them. This started uh, with the leadership of President Uhuru Kenyatta, the last mile uh, connection uh, policy, that has seen all our schools, uh, primary, connected. Oh, I saw something in the World Bank saying Yes, that we... we have been ranked the best. When you, you compare with our sister nations in, in East Africa, they are halfway what we have done. And as Kenyans, sometimes we need to pause to uh, actually pat ourselves on the back and uh, look at how well we are doing. When you look at uh, the issue of uh, ease of uh, doing business, today Kenya has become most attractive when uh, uh, President Uhuru took over, we were at about position uh, 134 in terms of the ranking in ease of doing business. After the first term, we came down to position uh, 81. Now we are at uh, 61, going down to 50. I believe by uh, uh, 2020, we should be amongst the top 50 nations in the ease of doing business. These are some of the things we need to celebrate as a nation. What? When you look at uh, the digital uh, connectivity and artificial intelligence, Kenya has been celebrated globally. Actually, we've been ranked with nations like Israel. We are above, head and shoulders above our peers. Uh, the fiber optic that we've laid across our country, the infrastructure, it makes Kenya one of the most digital. is a pioneer, was it? Look at m -Pesa. Yeah. Uh, today, world over, mm -hmm. the world is celebrating m -Pesa, and every time they do, they mention Kenya. So it's not only that uh, we are champions on the track. Every time our national anthem plays in the capitals of the world, we celebrate. We need to start also celebrating the progress we're making as Kenyans. So because of Instead time, of always focusing on the negatives. Because of time, yes. just remove your heart as cabinet secretary yes. for a second for yes. two issues. Yes. The first one is, what is your quick word to the judiciary? Yes. I mean, there's a lot of matters before them yes. that will affect how Jubilee will be judged yes. and how this country will emerge yes. in the months and maybe a year or two to come. You know what's on the plate of the judiciary. A you lot a needs to man be done. From the bar. A lot needs to be done. What would you say to I, your brother? First of all, uh, even before I uh, speak to Maraga, I must speak to uh, Justice uh, Willy, Dr. William Tunga and Nancy Barraza. We must thank them. You, you, you know, we, we are very quick in forgetting our heroes. In terms of judicial reforms, the foundation Willie and Nancy and their team laid was amazing. They, Today, they were very rough on Nancy. I guess. Yes, but yeah. uh, that was unfortunate. But we cannot forget her contribution in the judicial reforms, the thinking that went into it, the from strategy. Bombers. She was a pioneer. Yes, yes so we, we must first of all acknowledge that. Because today we have uh, uh, an independent judiciary that is much stronger, more respected. In fact, uh, we had them make uh, what shocked, not Africa, but the whole world, uh, the petition against the president. And uh, as we speak, uh, Justice Maraga and his team are doing well. But there is much more than can be done. When it comes to the war against corruption, the president has said time and again, as national government, we can do our part. 
as counties, we can do our part, but without the support of the judiciary, it's a key institution, we must acknowledge that we cannot win. Because there will be people who will be brought to the judiciary and who walk scot free and back to business. The war against corruption cannot be won uh, without the judiciary and all institutions, right from the investigators to the prosecutors to those who adjudicate. So, so speak, it is one change. So, so as we speak, there's heavy matters before the judiciary. Heavy and, and many, the backlog. Many of them we cannot discuss. And uh, the backlog but, is, uh, is but, heavy. But in particular, there yes. are new ones which yes. are coming, yes. which can really put a block on this country. Yes. So just generally, mm -hmm. uh, your advice to the judiciary is to be fair. They must be uh, fair and faithful to the but Constitution. they must Fidelity be to the uh, law. bold, they must be faithful to the Constitution, but also they must go beyond the call of duty. They must go beyond the uh, extra mile so that they are able to also do their part. Courts can be aggressive in yes. the public interest. Yes, we can have courts doing much more so that we are able to clear the backlog, we are able to dispense justice judiciously but also expeditiously. Eugene, the other issue that I wanted to ask, and I hope it doesn't give you discomfort, yes. because uh, you, know, you work for the president, mm -hmm. but when Joshua Kotuni was here, he reminded me that um, I was asking him about Jubilee. And I must ask you because the Jubilee is a, a creation, a birth child of the National Alliance Party and uh, the party of URP. And Eugene, um, Kenyans may not know, but I sat with you and the president, and you, at the time of the TNA launch, were to be the deputy president of Kenya. Since that time, you went to the cabinet, and only you and Barara were taken from what you call the political class to serve in cabinet. Everybody else was technocrats. Why did you become quiet? Why are you silent? Are you serving the country or have you been swallowed? And I say this because what happened to your footprints in the TNA and in the body of Jubilee? I can tell you, first of all, just to correct you, that uh, we didn't only have two parties forming Jubilee, apart from TNA and URP. We had New for Kenya. I, I was a party leader. My party played an instrumental role uh, in formation of Jubilee. We also had uh, my good brother, uh, Mwangi Kiunjuri. He was the leader of GNU, and uh, he's also in cabinet, apart from uh, Balala, who was also leading the Republic uh, Council uh, party. And uh, we also had uh, Kireitu Murungi leading the bus. So the, 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 these are amongst the parties that came together to form Jubilee and to, as I said, two things that I believed Uhuru Kenyatta would uh, uh, enable Kenyans overcome. The challenge of corruption and the challenge of uh, tribalism. When we, we endorsed him during the TNA launch, I was categorical in why I supported him. And when it comes to tribalism, he led us in coming together, him and Deputy President William Ruto, myself, Kiunjuri, Kiraitu, and other parties. There were about 13 parties. Just like the United States of America was founded in Philadelphia by 13 parties, we had 13 parties come together to unite the country so that we're not talking about uh, a Luya party. When they see New Fort Kenya, your party, our Luya, they see URP, our Kale, they see TNA, our Kikuyu. We wanted a national party to unite the country, and I can tell you, TG, on that aspect, we succeeded. And we have gone a step further, looking at the NASA arrangement. They also came together as parties, so that we are competing on the basis of our manifestos, our programs, our policies, and our projects. Was so I'm happy that this far we have made progress. So was it, it's fine. I mean, the it's, issue that no, remains no, no, now, no, TG, no, 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 before we go there, the issue that remains now is us turning our focus on winning the war against corruption. The equal zeal we put in in uniting the country, actually sacrificing our parties, is the same zeal we must put in winning the war against corruption. We have made steps in uniting the country, now we must deal with the dragon of corruption. But coming back to your question as to why I kept quiet, you know the new constitution changed. When in the old constitution I was a party leader and I was minister for justice, because then, uh, uh, ministers would come from parliament 
and we still hold a, a political office. But the new constitution changed, so I had to uh, step down and relinquish my uh, party leadership and serve in cabinet. This is where we are, and my priority right now, I, I did not follow what Kutunyi said, but uh, uh, he knows better because he was there with us. He was part of the formation of Jubilee. And uh, what I do know is that for now, my focus, TG, is to deliver. So, and so that I, I do have my assured duty. the President, TG, that I will focus <laughs> on delivering as Minister for uh, Devolution and Assets. And it's a heavy docket, yes. bringing together all the 47 counties. So, 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 so that this I is do, where my focus is. So that I do my duty. When the time for <laughs> politics comes, you can ask me about... So, so, so that I do my duty about, at Point yes. Blank, I'm yes. asking you whether this is true or not true. Yes. Kotuni told me here at Point Blank, yes. the information which he said I had, that Deputy President Ruto was to run for president with Ali Makwere as his deputy. You were to run as Uru Kenyatta's deputy. At the launch of the TNA, you are the only person who spoke. William Ruto did not speak. We are not talking about how TNA came. We are talking about the bid for presidency. Was there a deal done? And are you going to ever speak about it, Wamalwa, or is it not true? What Kotini said here, were you going to be Uhuru's running mate, or was it not true? That is correct, but uh, I have not spoken about it. As I've said, for now, my focus is on discharging the mandate the president has given me on behalf betrayed? of the people do you, of Kenya. Do you, do you feel betrayed? When the time for politics comes, TG, and uh, may I make this uh, very, very clear, the book of Ecclesiastes says there's a time and place for everything under the sun. There's a time to speak and a time to be silent. I think for now I'm silent performing and uh, discharging my mandate given to me by the president. When the time for politics comes, I will speak about the politics. Let me then I ask, do not wish to speak about that now. Let me ask you about this. Ask big, me about devolution. No, let me ask you about a big name that has was been said here. Yes. I had uh, Boni Halwale come here, and uh, he is the bullfighter. Yes. And the bullfighter has lumped you among the families of dynasties. Uh, even if he didn't mention you by name, the politics that Halwale has said will come when they come, if they come is about them and us, meaning the Wamalwas, the Moys, the Rai Odingas. The Od you come from a great family. Your father and my father, <laughs> anyway, that's a long story. But you are from the family of Senator, the first Senator, Uko Western, under Jomo Kenyatta. Then your late brother, the very, very bright, lovely Michael Kijana Wamalwa. Then you. Is this politics about to come going to be about hustler? and dynasty, and are you a dynasty? Uh, just the other day, we were launching uh, the China Trade Week. And uh, I told people about the history of uh, the Ming Dynasty. Uh, many people have thought Vasco da Gama was the first to arrive here, but there was a Chinese explorer who came over 600 years ago during the Ming Dynasty. But I told them that those who are dynasties existing in China and other parts of the world, Kenya does not have dynasties. Kenya does not have uh, royal uh, families or uh, uh, queens and kings. Kenya is a democracy. And part of what we must acknowledge is that we are one country united under God. And our constitution says Kenya Though we have a devolved government, we are, still a, uh, we are still one country called Kenya, and we must remain one indivisible nation under God. Any politics that would divide us is a politics we must reject. Even as we came together to support Uhuru Kenyatta, it was with one clear objective, to unite the country. So we had come from a background TG of us versus them, of 41 against one of people butchering their brothers and sisters and burning their houses because we, they were from a different community from us. As we come to the so national... So we must note, TG, under no circumstances whatsoever should we allow retrogressive politics that would divide this country again. Never again should we so allow... I have agreed with you. So we must not entertain... The national, you, there will be a time for national. No. But at the regional level, Bodhi Halwale is saying that he's taking a message from the region you hail from. Yes. And he's telling them 
that you were cheated by Uhuru Kenyatta. Th this is a matter of principle, TG. You remember my favorite uh, uh, pre uh, U.S. President Jefferson, what he said, that in matters of style, you can swim with the current, but in matters of principle, stand like a rock. For me, this is a matter of principle. We are embracing progressive politics that will unite the country, that will heal the wounds of the past. And under no circumstances whatsoever should we allow politics that will divide us again along whatever lines. So anyone trying to start a class war in this country or dividing Kenyans along certain lines, that is retrogressive politics that Kenyans should reject. Kenyans should seek unity, should seek healing of the wounds of the past, and should, should say no to politics of division and say yes to politics of unity. This is what Uhuru Kenyatta stands for, and this is why we support him. And I urge all Kenyans to support him so that we unite the country, TG. We are not going back there in the politics of us versus them. Waziri, we should um, not go back there. Obviously, you are a very important national figure. But there's a lot of excitement, I know tonight, yes. in the Mirembe Nation, yes. because you are one of their proudest sons. Yes. And uh, Musalia Mudavadi has been here, mm. and my good brother. Yes. And uh, Wetangula has been here. Yes. Uh, and they're both party leaders. And it would be unfair that uh, although you have the handcuffs of the flag, do the people of Murembe ignore you? Are you done with politics? You say it's not 2022 but you have supported Musadia before, where Tangula has said he's running for president. You, you Wapalwa, don't you feel somehow that you might be left behind, that people might be looking at the rear view mirror? Where is Eugene Wamalwa as we go forward? Thank you. Thank you, TG. And uh, as I answer that question, uh, may I just uh, clarify, because you said my brother, Boni Halwale, was here. And he talked about uh, uh, the Hustler Nation and the dynasties. I, I did not uh, follow that interview. And uh, my father was a son of a squatter. So may I clarify that John I, was a I do water. not belong <laughs> yeah. to any dynasty. Yes. I was born by a son of a squatter. My late grandfather was a squatter in a Mzungu farm in Transoy, who used to till and labor and my father struggled to become a chief. He struggled and was elected, not selected or anointed or appointed to be senator. If Eugene Omalo, a son of a senator, is a dynasty, then so is Boni Halwale. He was senator like my father. He was a senator like my father. So how can he say that I belong to some dynasty? Or... Secondly, when you look at the, our history, Jomo Kenyatta, if there was a hustler in this country, it was Jomo Kenyatta. He is a guy who used to walk this city, you know, looking at uh, vehicles and tickets. Uh, I'm, I'm told even uh, his uh, dues had not been paid. So how can you say uh, a man who worked hard, who led our country, who sacrificed and fought and brought independence so that we, we might be free? How do, you, how, how do you belittle <laughs> such a great man and uh, try to say uh, uh, this was, he, he was a hustler like any other hustler in Nairobi? Zemoy was, a, <laughs> was a, a poor teacher yes. from Kabartonjo yes. who worked hard to become who he is today. And you cannot start saying uh, you condemn this because we will be condemning hard work. We want TG to, well, in, to instill in this country and uh, for generations to come the values of hard work, the values of people earning from uh, the sweat of their brow, as the Bible says, and not the value of people doing deals and uh, saying... I, uh, I, you know, I put it to Bonnie Halwale, and I said then that, as I know, uh, the deputy president was in YK92. Yes. And I said to Bonnie, let's be honest about this history. Then he said, no, you know, Tony, we are hustlers. We are guys who have worked hard. So I think that there is a duty, and you need to come out more yes. from where you come from to tell Kenya. People may believe that you are born. Of royalty? Yes. And we, we, we come from a poor stock of people who labored on Mzungu farms. 
I'm a grandson of a squatter myself. Your brother I remember struggled. when I came to parliament. Your brother was vice president for how long? I was how, the, how many months? I was the first one yes. to bring a motion on squatters in Kenya. Why? Because my grandfather was a squatter. But Eugene, because of time, yes. Wamalwa Kijana sat how long? Was he able to amass uh, dynasty? No, he did not. He no, did because not. of the record. Kenyans yeah. are watching you. Yeah, to You're me, I want to tell Kenyans to say no to politics of division. Under whatever uh, circumstance, or by whichever persuasion. And I'll remind them of the saying of Reverend Nimlo, who said, because of uh, us versus them politics, uh, they came for me. Uh, when they came for the Catholics, you didn't speak because I'm not a Catholic. Then they came for the Protestants, you didn't speak because you're not a Protestant. They came for the Muslims, yet again, you did not speak because you're not Muslim. By the time they came, there was no one else left to speak for you. Do not allow Kenya to be divided along any lines, whether they are religious, whether they are political, tribal, or even in terms of uh, starting a class war in Kenya. I, I must ask you, David Murade was here, yes. and he's the immediate former vice chair of Jubilee. Yes. And you formed the party together yes. with David because you, you had a representative, and he had, when TNA, when you folded up, yes. And he said that there's going to be new formations. As we end tonight, was Murade uh, just speaking, or are there behind the scenes uh, maneuvers? You know, this is point blank. As I said, uh, I, I relinquished my uh, uh, political party leadership. Uh, right now, I'm uh, focusing on uh, delivery in my ministry. Honestly, I must say, when it comes to Jubilee Matters, I'm the least qualified to comment right now <laughs> because I do not know what's going on in the Jubilee political cycles. But I'm focusing on delivery, on the Big Four agenda of the president, on the war against corruption for uh, his legacy to be realized. And to me, that is where our focus should be. So but TG, the time is coming when we do politics. Our constitution allows us the fifth year to do politics. So, do you know the, 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 the coalitions that have formed government were formed in the last year of uh, the, 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 the election? So what is your last so word? It, I, I do not governors. See, I would say here, uh, TG, I do not see why people should be so obsessed about 2022 now. A time will come for us to do politics. Okay, I We can form coalitions. PNU was formed six months to the election. Your brother, the, so the, was the head of the Senate. And they formed governments. Lusaka is campaigning every yes, day. Yes. Half your governors are campaigning. Some cabinet colleagues are campaigning, talking 2022. The president has said, leave 2022. The country wants to hear tonight here at Point Blank. Yes. Is Eugene following the president and waiting for politics of 2022? Do you say it is wrong? Because clearly the cabinet is divided. There are those who are campaigning every day, even in our churches. There is a conflict. Where does Wamalwa stand on whether cabinet should be working or campaigning? Because every Saturday, for, every weekend, for the Kwanza, Western Kenya is where the, everybody comes every weekend in Western Kenya. For the record, TG, the cabinet is not divided. We are united under the leadership of President Uhuru Kenyatta. We work as one team. We deliver as one. The only thing I'm saying is that there will be a time for politics. Please let us work for Kenyans. The time we've been given, let us deliver on our pledges. As I have said, the winning coalitions were formed six months to the elections. Why don't we wait for 2022 when it comes? We can form the winning team actually in the second half of 2022. Why are we burning a lot of energy, So what do you tell those who are in churches every weekend? What are you saying? I would say, what are you, let listening? us focus on delivering on the big four. Ensure that every Kenyan is free from hunger. Ensure that our youth get jobs. Ensure that every Kenyan can access affordable universal health care. Ensure that Kenyans live in good homes. Whether you look at the Jubilee Manifesto or the NASA Manifesto, the big four is a distillation of those manifestos. So let us work on delivery. The time for politics will come, we'll do politics. Eugene, well, you and know, I believe, uh -huh. be, you better believe me, TG. The will, on, a lighter, team, on a lighter issue. The winning team on, would emerge on, on a lighter, in 2022. On a lighter matter. Yes. Not, a, now. There's, there's, Not now. There's the time you called me from Egypt. Yes. You were looking at the pyramids uh, of Giza. Yes. And uh, they are timeless. Yes. Uh, as we close today, yes. what is your recollection? 
I think that was a beautiful <laughs> verse. I, I, lo I love the... It says, the, uh, it's a verse that says, uh, uh, time and tide waits for no man or king. And the greatest thing man fears is time. But the greatest thing that time fears are the pyramids of Giza. <laughs> because those pyramids are timeless. <laughs> they have seen Napoleon. They have seen Napoleon. <laughs> they saw the beautiful Cleopatra. They even saw Hitler. <laughs> Come and go. And yet, they kept silent. <laughs> so I think when uh, people are silent sometimes, they might be like the pyramids of Giza watching. <laughs> but the time will come, as the Bible says, there's a time and place for everything under the sun. For now, please, let us work for Kenyans. When the time for politics comes in 2022, let us do politics. Thank you. Well, you're watching Point Blank, the pyramids of Giza are timeless. They've seen Napoleon Bonaparte. They've seen Nelson Mandela. They've seen Martin Luther King. And they're still there watching. What will happen in 2022? Keep tuned to Point Blank. Eugene, thank, thank you, you so thank you, much Eugene. for coming. Thank you. Giving us the honor and the privilege to thank be here for the government. Thank you. Tell your brothers and sisters in the cabinet, they come and talk to Kenyans. Thank you. I will welcome them to come. Yeah. And I will tell them that it's a wonderful and enjoyable show. Let them come and talk to Kenyans point blank. <laughs> Thank you, Chichi. It's KTN News. Thank you so much. Point Blank by TG was filmed on location at the Nairobi Serena Hotel.